Look who's joined the cast of Big D Little A Double L A S Dallas. Dallas. This guy's name is Mark Singer, and he's playing the new role of Matt Cantrell. He's, are you going to replace Bobby Ewing, Patrick oh, Duffy? I don't, I don't think anybody could replace Bobby Ewing. I think that that was a, a niche in television history that he carved out that nobody could ever replace. Why would he leave the show? You know, you know what happens to actors who are exposed that much week after week after year after year. Are you going to scare well? me? Why? What? What? What happens to them? When, well, they fade into insignificance oh. in many cases. Nah. Why, where, where did where did he go? Where did Patrick Duffy go? Pat uh, went off to uh, pursue other things in the career. You know, that's that's one of the things about being an actor. You always have to understand that around the corner there's another like, experience, another opportunity, and I'm sure he did. And so he went on to that, whatever that is. Um, Dallas, as a matter of fact, sort of primes you for that experience because Dallas is a very improvisatory storyline. You know, you come to work one day and you're one kind of person, you come back the next day and you're another kind. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure he's primed for whatever's around the corner for him. Keep talking because I want everybody okay. to listen to <laughs> listen to his voice and then and see who he reminds you of. Just, just Lamont keep to Cranston. No, is no, that right? No, 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 no. Uh, you know right. who you sound like? Who? Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy. Is that right? Maybe I'll run for no one. No one has ever said that to you? No. Don't you think he sounds like Bobby Kennedy? I well, really think he does. How does it? Let me try this out on you. Africa. <laughs> what do you think? How about say, my, my name is Lita, L-E-T-A. How yeah, would you leader. say? Leader. Yeah, there. leader. <laughs> take me to your leader. Yeah, take me to your leader or give me at least a leader. <laughs> I w we want to introduce you to this character. Uh, why don't why, will you set up a scene for us from Dallas? Uh, sure. Okay. This is the introductory scene where Matt Cantrell, which is the character that I portray, uh, enters the offices looking for his friend Bobby, and he doesn't know that Bobby is no longer with us. Okay, let's watch. You know, back when I was just scraping to get by, when everybody thought I was a loser, Bobby believed in me. Now he's gone. I'll never get a chance to thank him. Oh, I think he knew how much you appreciated it. <sighs> Did he ever mention anything to you about an emerald mine in South America? Well, I received your package, and I read your letter. Bobby saw to it that Ewing Oil subsidized me, backed me all the way when nobody else would. But I had a feeling. I knew deep down in my bones we were going to strike it big. That's when I came to tell him. I found the emeralds. After all this time, I finally found them. I couldn't wait to see the look on his face. You know, when, when Dynasty was introduced about, well, about four years ago now, at first we thought, wow, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Right. So here comes a show that looks very much like Dallas. But that sucker's been growing and growing and yeah. growing. Yeah. And, and giving Dallas a run for its money, uh, are there any kind of strategy planning sessions that you guys get together with or the writers and say, what are we going to do about Dynasty? You know, I, I don't think there are because um, uh, each show stands on its own merits, and if it can't, then there's no reason for the show to exist. Uh, Dallas uh, broke new ground when it uh, created itself and uh, continues to do so every day. So uh, really, the, the only planning that goes on is uh, how to keep the level of performance up and the level of excitement in the storylines and things like that. Um, you know, there's, there are enough problems and enough uh, uh, creative uh, opportunities in, in any given show that they take up most of everybody's energies mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. How is Miss Ellie's health? Barbara Bell Geddes, we know that she's... <laughs> Seems you know. good to me. <laughs> she has more energy than, uh, than any six people that I've ever met. So uh, I would imagine that if, if uh, I mean, this is the first I've even heard of it. So I would imagine it's in, that she's in great shape. That's good. Yeah. She's a fine, fine Am I actress. missing something? Did I? Well, she was very ill. Did you watch the show before you came on it? Yes, I did. But I watched it in the way that I watch uh, a lot of shows. I have so many friends that are in ongoing series, uh, both of the Dallas uh, variety and also uh, regular format series, that I check in on them occasionally, sort mm -hmm. of like uh, going around and visiting. So I don't follow the story, I didn't follow the storylines on a week by week basis, just on a general basis. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the most piercing green eyes. Look at those eyes, aren't those you something? Just say it's all about <laughs> no, not every man, man has green eyes. <laughs> just see. Very special show, Dallas. Thank you. It really is, and we welcome you aboard the cast. Well, I'm I'm glad to be there. They're they're a nice bunch, and they and they they certainly are 
fun and funny to be around every day. Mark, you come from a musical family, right. musical background. Um, did they force you to play the piano? Uh, yeah, they, they did force me to play the piano, and like, uh, like all good kids, I resisted it. And uh, now it's coming out again in my life in, uh, in the form of country western music, which I compose. And it looks like Dallas has a kind of special karma for me, because I was raised in Texas. I have relatives in Dallas. Ah. Uh, my musical training is being now uh, put to use in employing country western songs. Could you do any music on the show? It's possible. The, the format in Dallas is open to anything. You know, it's amazing. It's kind of interesting because they try you out and see how the audience responds to you. And then if they really like you, yeah. Mark, your character will grow right. like a plant. You water it and you talk to it. That's right. And then you're a star. Yes, or you grow up and uh, reach up into the clouds and find out that you're at the foot of the giant's castle or something like that. Right? Yeah. Get it. Or they write you out of the script. Well, that's always <laughs> possible. That's always possible on every show. You can be with a, you know, you can be with a successful show and have the show itself disappear too. So I mean, you know, life is full of variety, and that's one of the wonderful things about being in this industry. What would you like to do ten years from now? Uh, be sitting here talking to you. Oh, okay, let's do it. We'll all do right. it. Okay, I got, we got a date. All right. That'll put it, let's see, 1990. Okay, I'll we'll, set my watch. All right. <laughs> His name is Mark Singer. He's the new Matt Cantrell on Dallas. We hope you watch it. Please don't go away. 10, 11 morning, Kenny Kids News.